take a look how to build an atomic model in an electron microscopy map. So here's the result we're going to produce. Let me show you what the map looks like. This is a cryo-EM map of a nano cage and the atomic model. The cylinders here are alpha helices. So we're going to fit the atomic model into the map and then we're going to apply symmetry. So let's start from the beginning. I'm going to close this set. All right, the map is from the EM data bank, and I can open it. I say open 11997. That's the from EMDB. That's the ID number from EMDB. This is a nano cage. It's made from an aldolase protein, a 60 copies of that protein. And it was designed so that uh, uh, antigens like the SARS coronavirus receptor binding domain could be attached to the cage, and this could be used as a vaccine. All right, so let's let's get the aldolase protein uh, structure that comes from X-ray crystallography. That's uh, let me see what 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 was that one W A three from the PDB. So I'll say open one W A three. There it is. Uh, let me hide the map for a second. So we have two copies in the crystal unit cell. Uh, there, if I hover over here, I can see these are chains D, E, and F. And over here I have chains B, A, C, A, B, C. I only need one copy, this basic trimeric subunit. And so let's delete T, D, E, and F. I'll do that with a command. Delete slash, that means chain, D, comma, E, comma, F. And let's bring back the map. And the, th the three-way junctions are where this trimeric uh, aldolase go. And there are, uh, how many of them are there of that? Uh, five, 10, 20. there are 20 of them, okay? So uh, let's fit it to one of the three-way junctions. And first I'm gonna place it by hand in approximately the correct location. And then uh, we'll optimize that fit. So to place it by hand, I'm gonna go to this right the tool on the toolbar, this right uh, mode. Actually, uh, yeah, let's do that. And then this move model icon will allow me to move the atomic model while the map stays still. So let me click that. And it's called right mouse because it assigns your right mouse button. I'm on a laptop with a trackpad. And um, to emulate the right mouse, it's a Mac laptop. To emulate the right mouse button, I hold the command key. On Windows, you might hold the Alt key if you're on a Windows laptop with a trackpad. So it moves the selected atomic model in case I had more than one. And so let me select an atom. I only need to select one. It made a green outline around it. Uh, and then now I hold the Command key and I can drag this um, Aldolase model around. And so I'll do that. And then if I release the Command key, I can move all the models. and um, I can shift this and shift it again. And if, th this allows me to shift the model, but what if I need to rotate it? Well, if I hold the shift key in addition, then it rotates instead of shifting. So I get the uh, position approximately right. I don't need it to be exactly right. Let's, um, and okay, so let's optimize the fit now. If I go to the toolbars, there's one called Map. And um, if you have a recent version of Chimera X uh, from March 2021 or newer, or Chimera X 1.2, then it will have this Fit button, and it can fit the atomic model in the map. Just do a rigid body optimization. It works with the current, you have to have one atomic model displayed and one map displayed. And then we just pr press this button and it will move the atomic model. So let me do that. So here we go, it's, it's moved it to a better position and given me some information in the log. Um, let me show the model as alpha as, um, as ribbon instead of atoms. We'll get a better sense of how it fits in this four angstrom EM map. For that, I'll go to the molecule display toolbar and I'll say under atoms, I'll say hide. Um, actually, it only hid the selected atom. Remember I hid one atom. So let me clear the selection but I, I hold the control key and click on the background. And then I'll say hide atoms and show cartoons. And 
If we zoom in here, you'll see that these alpha helices don't seem to fit very well in the density, okay? And the probable cause of that is I might have the, tri the trimer upside down. Um, so let's flip it over and then redo the fit. So I'll select a residue and then I'll hold the command key down again and the shift key to rotate. When I need to rotate um, perpendicular to the screen axis, so I can easily rotate uh, holding the shift key about the Y axis or the X axis, but how do I rotate about the Z axis? If you start the rotation, you click um, on the trackpad near the boundary of the window, then it rotates about the Z axis. So that's a useful trick. Um, now I've got the position approximately right. It doesn't have to be too close. I go back and hit that fit button under the map toolbar. And uh, now it's nearly disappeared, which uh, is because it's inside the map. Um, if we go over to the volume viewer histogram, uh, first I see it's at step two, meaning the map is showing only every other grid point. That's just for rendering speed. Let me change it to step one. Okay, uh, to get a better view of this, to make the map look more three-dimensional, some shadows help. And the home toolbar at the right under lighting, I can hit soft lighting. That gives a nicer view of the shadows. And now I'd like to make the map transparent. Um, under the map toolbar, there's a little ice cube icon. It says transparent surface. So I can make it transparent. And I see that the, the helices now fit pretty beautifully inside the map. Um, my lighting got screwed up with the transparent surfaces. The shadows uh, by default aren't turned on for a transparent surface. I can change that. The reason it does that is because the atomic model inside the transparent surface then becomes dark. All right. But it's not the best default for this case we're working on. And I can change it. I can say the command to change it is material. And then, um, I think it's um, transparent cast shadows or something, but I can just abbreviate transparent uh, true. So material transparent true causes the transparent surface to cast shadows just to get a nice view here. And I see that the helices fit nicely into the density. If you don't have a Chimera X version, uh, I think actually older Chimera X versions, the fit icon only fit one map in another map, not an atomic model in a map. So it may not have worked for you if you have an older Chimera X, like version 1.1. But in that case, there's a, there's a tool, a panel that can do the fitting, does the same job. It's under Tools, Volume Data, Fit in Map. So let me click that and just show you that way. It says Fit My Atomic Structure in the Map. If I click the fit button, uh, well, it didn't move because we were already fit in an optimized position, but it told me the average map value um, is 0.3. So the map intensity values says range from negative 0.2 to 0.8. So it's trying to optimize the average map value. Sometimes you also want to, you prefer a correlation coefficient. In order to get a correlation, that's between two maps. And so first you have to simulate a map from the atomic model. That's under this options button. So I'll click options. And uh, this option use map simulated from atoms at resolution. Uh, the resolution of the map is four angstroms. So I'll choose four here. And then if I press the fit button, oops, I just made my window much taller. But you see it reports a correlation coefficient of 0.87 now. And it did that by making a simulated map, which isn't being displayed, but it appeared in the model panel. I can show it here. There is the simulated map from the atomic model. So the correlation gives the agreement with that map. Okay, uh, let's, um, so I'm gonna close this fitting tool. There are other options here you can explore. Um, we've got a part of the nano cage. Okay, one trimer. How do we get all of them? Well, first let me put the cage, which has an icosahedral symmetry, um, into um, the norm, the standard original orientation. If I go to the graphics tab, there's this button called orient. Okay, this is the original orientation. I need to find the coordinate frame 
where um, to do the symmetry operation. And I see looking down the Z axis right here in the middle that we have a two-fold symmetry axis along the Z direction. And if I rotate, I see I had a two-fold axis along X and there's a two-fold axis along Y. That symmetry in Chimera X is called icosahedral 222. That's the abbreviation. And so I can type a command. And let me make my window small enough so you can see my command. It says to, to um, apply symmetry to this, uh, the icosahedral symmetry to the atomic model. The command is sim. Then I give the atomic model number two. And then i, that's for icosahedral, comma, 222. This stuff is in, so let's do that. And um, let me hide our map. And you'll see now I have copies making the full nano cage. Um, um, that sim command, if you needed more information, you can say help sim, because there are a lot of choices for the symmetries. And you'll bring up this browser with, whoops, browser just docked it into the main window with, a, with detailed information about the different symmetries that you can use. That help command works for any of the Chimerix commands bringing up information. So what I see here, though, is uh, I've got a blue, a green, and a red copy all on top of each other. And the problem is we applied uh, the 60-fold symmetry, but we should have applied it to just one chain, not all three chains, okay? So, because it rotated the, the trimer to the three different positions. So I've got three overlapped trimers. Let me delete chains B and C. Um, to so that we just have one copy. So I'll delete slash B comma C. Okay, so there is our model. Let me color it a different color. I'll say actions color yellow. And I like to show the alpha helices as just cylinders. I can do that with presets, cylinders and stubs. So there are our cylinders. So here is our atomic model shown in this cartoon style with uh, alpha helices as cylinders. And if I bring back the map, we can see it has very nice agreement with the e four angstrom EM map. All right, thank you for listening.